So we've generated a photon map. We're now going to look at how we can visualize it. We can actually visualize this file using a normal geometry node. If we dive inside, we get a file node here. And if I choose uh, the global room map, uh, we can load in the, the photon map. At the moment we're not seeing anything and uh, the reason for that is we haven't got display points on. If I turn on display points and wireframe view we can see that the photons are indeed being shone into the room. There are a lot of them here hitting on the window substantial number as we'd expect in the bright area of the room, but also a distribution throughout the room. There's another way of um, visualizing the photon maps, and that's using the global illumination shader. If we set the irradiance style to no irradiance, but we include our photon map, and you need to do this on the second tab here, and we can select it, If we now render our scene, we can see here very roughly where our photons are and how bright they are. Essentially they're clustered around the bright area of the wall, as we can see. Let's look again at those parameters in the PBR tab which control how a photon map is generated. The important thing to remember is that the photon map has no idea about geometry. It just has photons that are either nearer or further from the point we're interested in. Photon maps work by taking into account the photons that are near the point that, that we're interested in, and these parameters here control how that search is done. The global search radius sets how far uh, away from the point we're interested in, the renderer will look for photons. Global count controls the maximum number of photons within this radius that will be taken into account. So it could be that uh, somewhere up here on the wall um, we're going to find that there are more than uh, 50 photons within a one unit radius of the point we're interested in. And in that case, the nearest 50 will be taken account of. The global radius is important because, as I said, the photon map has no idea of geometry. I've ensured that my room here has quite thick walls. But for example, down here, uh, this photon, or a point near this photon, might take into account photons that are actually on the shelf above it because the global radius is large enough that those points will come within its bounds. Now often this doesn't matter too much, but there are some circumstances where if the global radius is set wrongly, or if you create walls or obstacles which are very thin, uh, you can run into problems. And there's an example uh, render that I've got here to demonstrate that. And here it is. This scene has been set up with a distant light illuminating a grid and a box. And the box is simply a thin walled uh, box. It's one of the primitives that you get from the create shelf. And I put inside the box a point light um, with photon emission. Now what's happening here is that the photons that are inside the box are leaking out of it because uh, the global search radius uh, is large enough to take into account photons inside the box. And that's why we're getting this extraordinary effect at the bottom of a bright uh, border to the box. So in order to avoid this, 
you need to ensure that your geometry has some thickness and you need to ensure that the global search radius is set to a level which doesn't allow it to cross those boundaries. So back to our scene. Let's have a look and see what this looks like when we render it. But first I'm going to turn off the display of those points and on our global illumination shader tab we want to set this to full irradiance. I'm going to reduce the number of samples. Our photon map is correctly given in the global photon map slot here. We don't use a caustic photon map and we're not using a direct photon map. So let's render that out. And here's the result. As you can see, the effect is pretty subtle and it took a very long time to render, about five or six minutes on my machine. This uh, is partly because uh, the number of photons inside the room is small. If we have a look at our photon map again, we can see that most of the photons are getting deposited right at the entrance here. And that's even though I've used a spotlight it, which is pretty well framing the window. This is one of the weaknesses of the photon mapping solution in Houdini. Houdini does not yet have the uh, portal lights which some other applications uh, which use the mental ray renderer provide, um, which make a much more efficient way to render situations like the one we have here. So you want to be very clear about whether it's worth the time to render using photons. They're essential, of course, for rendering caustics, which we're not going to cover in this tutorial, but their effect on normal global illumination is really not significant and often not worth the investment of rendering time to produce the result. Let's do a comparison. We can set up a normal uh, full irradiance render by just deleting the reference to the photon map here. And... Uh, disconnecting this and when we render that and here we have the render using just full irradiance with no photon map and if we compare the two images we can see that the photon map does add a little bit of extra brightness but overall its effect is not that significant Well, that brings us to an end of this tutorial on global illumination in Houdini. Thank you very much.